Mr. Ambassador, can you talk a little bit about the India of today? In my about uh, 30 years or so of uh, public service and in the diplomatic service of India, I have found that India and its engagement with the world has changed tremendously. And if you look at India itself in terms of our levels of uh, economic development, in terms of levels of technology, there has been a huge transformation. Uh, let me just mention to you one figure. Today, there are more than 950 million mobile phone users in India. And a few years ago, that would have been unimaginable. And mobile phones have completely changed the way people are now conducting their lives, getting information, doing business. Uh, for example, there are websites in India where if you send a text message around the time of the elections, you get a response indicating who the candidates are, what their background is. And so we have tremendous amount of information out there. People in rural areas use the mobile phones to get information about neighboring markets, what are the prices of inputs, what are the prices of products, and they are able to choose where to go. And people are now using mobile phones to do banking, they're using mobile phones to be able to do uh, payments. So in many ways, life in India, the way we conduct our business has been transformed. Today, we have a tremendous pressure of population uh, in agriculture, which needs to be reduced to some extent. In India, unlike a normal developing country, we have gone straight from agriculture to services, skipping in a large way the manufacturing sector. And agriculture today contributes about 14% of our GDP, but services sector contributes 60% of our GDP. And again, I'll give you one example to, uh, to you to show the kind of difference we face in terms of pressures of population, in terms of value addition. The IT sector in India contributes 7% of our GDP and employs 3 million people. Agriculture contributes 14% of our GDP and there are 700 million people dependent on agriculture. Therefore, if you're looking at productivity in a longer term framework, there's clearly a need to reduce the pressure on agriculture. And therefore, people move from rural areas, move from agriculture to urban areas to work in services, manufacturing. At one level, it is creating an opportunity. And I think as they move to the urban areas, they are able to look for new skills, new ways of working, new areas to work in, like, for example, in the IT sector. Uh, it, they are able to uh, engage with modern developments in technology in terms of economic organization. So that, again, is an opportunity. Mr. Ambassador, we're going to be showing a film about India. What should Marylanders know about what this film will say about India? Today, more than 650 million people in India are below 25 years of age. And therefore, when you look at the world, when you look at many societies feeling the pressure of an aging population, in India, we have what we call a demographic dividend, a population which is young, which is going to be technically trained, and which is doing a lot of focus on innovation. And therefore, this is really the new energy in India uh, that people are uh, trying to engage with. And also, our democratic structure allows people to find empowerment through education and advance in life. So there is a lot of convergence of interest in terms of how we deal with the challenges. And I think another very interesting dimension that has emerged is that over the past several decades, Indian origin people who have come to America have made a very significant contribution to society here. Today, I'm given to understand that there are more than 110,000 Indian doctors in the United States serving in remote parts of the country and making a contribution to healthcare and to affordable healthcare in the United States. Uh, again, the Indian American and community and Indian origin people are very important part of the hospitality business in the United States uh, through the hotel industry. Uh, we have about 100,000 Indian students in US universities. And for them, uh, as uh, trade statistics show, uh, we pay about $3 billion a year as tuition fees to U.S. universities. So it's a very major engagement with the U.S. Uh, university system. Uh, so the presence of uh, Indian origin people in the United States and the contribution they are making to society and to the economy here uh, is also deepening the relationship uh, between our two countries. In the last couple of months, uh, for instance, uh, I have made uh, several trips to the west coast of America. And if you see the involvement of uh, 
Indian origin tech entrepreneurs and the whole entrepreneurship and innovation ecosystem on the West Coast in Silicon Valley, Bay Area, it is phenomenal. I'm told almost one third of foreign origin startups there uh, can be attributed to Indian origin tech entrepreneurs and it's a major contribution that they are making to the United States.